Hey guys, and welcome to part three of the AWS Cognito tutorial series. In this video, we'll be putting the final pieces in place for authentication, including making sure that authentication and user info persist across page loads and page refreshes, and also completing the remaining pages in the auth flow, such as forgot password and change password. So if that sounds good, please stick around and let's get started. All right, so before we move on to any more of the auth pages, we need to make one final important improvement for our application authentication state. Now, if we log in via the login page, we see that the username is displayed at the top right, and uh, we have a good indication that the user's logged in based on the visibility of the logout button and the fact that the registration button is hidden, all right? But what, ha what happens if we just refresh the page? So now we're back to square one and we've lost our authentication state in our application. Now, the reason for this is if you remember from the last video, immediately after we log our user in, um, we're setting the is authenticated state and we're setting the user object in our main app.js state, okay? So whenever the page refreshes, however, or if we navigate away, these default back to the original values of false and null. Okay, so we need some way, some mechanism to persist the state of our authentication between page loads and page refreshes. Now, the way that we can persist our authentication data across all pages of our application is by leveraging local storage. Okay, now that's client browser side storage. And luckily, AWS Amplify automatically inserts all of our user data and authentication objects in local storage, okay? And it also provides utility methods for us to both retrieve the session object and the user object from local storage, as well as refresh the tokens when necessary. So the first task that we're gonna to need to tackle here is gonna to be to load that session object and user object from local storage and set it into our application state so that the state of our authentication is persisted between page loads, refreshes, redirects, and so forth as the user navigates around the site during the time of the session. All right. So let's open up our code editors and get down to business. All right, so I'm back in visual code here and I've opened up the project. I'm gonna go ahead and um, drill into the source folder and I'm gonna open up app.js, all right? Now, the reason we wanna start coding in app.js is because this is a nice central location. Um, we can write code here that's gonna run anytime any page loads, all right? So, uh, the first thing we want to do is to actually bring the library in. So I'm going to go right below this uh, footer import on line 15. All right, and we can do import uh, destructuring syntax off from AWS Amplify. Okay. So basically what we're looking to do is have some code run uh, anytime this component loads. So we can use the lifecycle method called component did mount, which you may have heard of if you've done any uh, React work. All right, so this is a good place to uh, put any kind of setup or initialization code. Let's go right underneath our set user method here on about line 36. Now we're going to want to make this async. All right, so we can use async await here. So we'll go component did mount. All right, and let's just set up an empty um, function body here. All right, so what we're basically looking to do, uh, step one is going to be to load the session object from local storage. To do that, we can use the auth.current session method. All right, so let's set up a placeholder variable here for our session object. Const session equals, and then I'm going to say await auth current session. All right. Now, what this method is going to do is basically retrieve the session object from local storage. And the nice thing about it is that it will automatically, behind the scenes, refresh the token if and when necessary. All right. So we don't even have to worry about managing that manually, which is a really good thing. All right. So once we've got the session object, what we want to do is flip our is authenticated status flag to true. Okay, now if you recall in the last lesson, this is the same thing that we were doing immediately after login. But now we want to do it, you know, on any page where we find a, a session, a currently active session. 
All right, so we can use our set auth status method here. I'm just going to copy that, and I'll do this dot set auth status and pass in true. All right, now uh, one thing I'm going to want to actually wrap this in a try catch. Okay, so let's do that and let's move this code inside the try clause. Okay, and let's write our catch clause. We'll pass an error. And I'm just going to console.log our error for now. All right, so at this point we're setting the authentication status into state. But what we also want to do is save the user into state. All right, so we can go right on line 41 below our console log, and we can use another um, helper method here. So let's do const user equals auth current authenticated user. Okay, and now this is going to return a user object that we can uh, leverage then to display the uh, the username and things like that. Okay, so once this returns, then we'll go ahead and set it in state this dot set user and pass in the user object. All right, that looks good. So one last thing we want to do before we uh, test this out is since these are all async functions, we actually want to hold off on the rendering of the page and of the component until these are finished. So the way we can do that is we can add one more state property right here under is authenticated and we'll call it is authenticating. Okay. Now we'll set a default. Oops, I spelled that wrong. There we go. We'll set a default value of true. Okay, so we'll we'll assume that it's still authenticating until we have confirmation that these two have returned. Oops, and you know, one more thing, we need to await before our auth current authenticated user, otherwise this will run too early, or it could run too early. All right, so make sure you add that. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so is authenticating. So now we can add a check before we render our page content down here. So let's go above our container div here, and we'll say, if not authenticating, ampersand, ampersand, then render our page. Okay, so once this, this uh, basically this flag gets flipped to false, which we need to add that as well, <laughs> then we'll render the page. All right, so one more piece here. Let's go below our try catch because we want to, we want this to run whether or not um, this succeeds. So we can say this dot set state use our set state method is authenticating equals false. All right, now everything should be wired up correctly at this point. So regardless of whether or not this succeeds, we'll render our page after it's done, either after these return or after we console log our error message. All right, so let's go ahead and save this file and give it a try. All right, so I've got this saved. I'm going to go back to the browser. Oops, and I think this is probably a spelling error. Is authenticating is not defined, line 58. Line 58. Is authenticating. Aha. Uh -huh. Authenticating. is authenticating that looks correct uh, missing a state probably or um, yeah exactly i'm missing this dot state how could i forget that <laughs> all right so yeah sorry about that make sure you guys have this dot state dot is authenticating all right since we're referencing the state property directly we need to um, do it via the this object so let's go ahead and save that again go back to the browser much better all right so yeah, we can just, uh, I think the fact that the page just refreshed uh, is looking good, that we still have hello, Jay Spruance here. Let's try to navigate to another page. Let's go to the products page. And there it is. It's still there. So that's perfect. That's great. Our uh, authentication status is persisting now between pages and between page refreshes in our application. So that's really great. That's good news. Um, 
All right, let's uh, move on to the next task. All right, so now that we've got our session persistence pretty solid across the application, we can go ahead and turn our attention to finishing the auth flow pages. So what we've got remaining is um, forgot password and change password along with the corresponding verification screens. So let's go ahead and log out and let's go back to the login page. All right, now you can see below the login form, we've got our forgot password link. So go ahead and click on that. Let's take a look at the forgot password page. All right, so pretty typical flow here. The user enters their email, um, click the submit button, which will we'll change this to say submit, not login. So basically Cognito will email the user with a uh, forgot password verification code, which they'll then enter and then be able to change their password. All right, so let's jump back over to our code editor and go ahead and implement the forgot password functionality. All right, so let's go back into our auth folder and look for the forgot password.js file. Go ahead and open that up. All right, now this is going to be really straightforward and look very similar to what we've done before. Um, you guys are probably getting used to the pattern here. So first we need to go ahead and import auth. Let's go to the top of the file here. And so let's go to the so let's go to the top of the file here and do an import auth from AWS Amplify. All right. Now, if you scroll down a bit, you should find that um, familiar commented out section AWS Cognito integration here. So let's go right on the line below that. Okay. And let's set up a uh, try catch here. So we'll do catch error and let's just console log any error that we might get. Okay. All right, so there's really no return data that we're going to need to do anything with here. So we can just go ahead and do an await auth dot forgot password. Camel case, just like that. And we'll need to uh, pass in the email, which will be set in state by the time that the user submits the form. So we can do this dot state dot email. Oops. There we go. All right, now what we want to do once this, oh, by the way, we need to make this async. Oh, it's already async, okay. So uh, I think you guys will probably have this already set to async uh, when you download the starter kit, but just make sure line 24 forgot password handler is an async function. All right, um, so what I was saying is we need to redirect after we submit the form to the verification page. So then the user is going to go to their email, grab the code, they'll be already redirected to the proper screen and they can go ahead and enter their code. So we'll do this through the props.history. Let's do this dot props dot history dot push. Again, this is just the uh, react way to read or one of the react ways to do a redirect. Push this onto the history object. So we'll say forgot password verify. I believe is the page name or the route name I should say forgot password verification all right that looks good and with that I think we can go ahead and save the file and go ahead and test this out all right let's go back to the browser okay that's a good sign I'm not seeing any errors here I'll just pop open console here just in case and uh, I should probably make my screen a little bit, font size a little bit bigger here. All right, so let's say I'm a user. I've come here and I can't remember my password. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the email associated with my uh, user profile. Oh, and you know what? I wanted to change the login. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. I just wanted to change the text there on that button. Um, so if we go to forgot password, scroll down until you see that submit button. Here it is, right on line 88. Let's just say submit, nice and generic. All right, so back to the browser, and I'll enter in my email and go ahead and hit submit. All right, perfect, so we've been redirected, and I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video, grab that confirmation code for my email, and we'll test that out here. All right, so I did get the verification code in my email as expected. 
But you know what, before we test this all the way through, we need to go ahead and implement the uh, functionality on the set new password page, because that's our next step. All right, so let's go back over to the editor and let's open up forgot password verification.js. All right, now to make this go a little bit quicker, let's just start copying and pasting a few things here. So we can go back to forgot password up to the top and just copy the import statement. And let's paste that just right here on line four for forgot password verification. All right. Now find our familiar comment down here on line 38 for Cognito integration. And let's set up our try catch. You could copy and paste this if you want. it's pretty much going to be the same thing. So console log error. All right, now for the try. Let's see, what do we want to do here? Um, we're going to do an await auth dot forgot password submit. All right, now this is going to take three parameters. So let's uh, actually, oops, semicolon. Let's actually put these on new lines here. So if, if we look back at state, uh, what do we have here? We have uh, a property for our verification code, a property for the email, and a property for our new password. So the user is going to actually, um, sorry, uh, set up their new password on this screen. All right, so back on line 41. Let's pass in first this.state.email. Oh, can't spell here. I'm still not good at typing and talking at the same time. <laughs> hopefully, I'll, hopefully I'll improve. Okay, so let's do this state verification code. And let's do this state new password. All right, and once that returns, then we're, we're going to want to redirect to the change password confirmation page. So this is a, a three-step process here. This props history.push. And we're going to redirect to, I'll keep my, well, my, my quotes are a little bit inconsistent here. So I should fix that later but I'm going to say slash change password confirmation. All right, so that should complete this flow. So the user is going to first enter in their email, um, get the verification code in their email, get redirected to the forgot password verification page, enter in their confirmation code and their new password, and then finally land on the change password confirmation screen. So let's go ahead and uh, save our file, go back to the browser, and let's try this out. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start from scratch here, go back to the login page, and then click on forgot password. All right, I'm gonna enter my email. I'm gonna go ahead and click on submit. All right, now I'm gonna pause the video and go grab that verification code. All right, so I've grabbed my code from email, and I'm going to enter in my email address here. There it is. And I'm just going to change my password slightly by one character or something like that. Okay, and well, this should say submit here on this button, but we'll worry about that later. So let's go ahead and submit the form. And there we go. Change password. Your password has been successfully updated. So that all looks good. Now let's attempt to log in with our new password and just make sure that everything's working correctly. So I'm gonna go to login here and my name's already populated so I'll just enter my new password. Okay, and log in. And there we go, all right. So our new password has been updated in the system in AWS Cognito. And our login is working with the new password. So, so far, so good. All right, so we've got one more scenario to cover before we are done with this entire project. And that is uh, the version of change password, basically, that the user would go to explicitly. In other words, not the forgot password flow, but just, hey, 
uh, I feel like changing my password today. So that is the last thing that we'll attack, and then we will call it done. All right, so let's go ahead and update that button before I forget. So forgot password verification.js. Um, if you scroll down to almost the bottom, line 117 it should be, or thereabouts, let's change login to just submit again. There we go. That way it makes a little bit more sense for our user. Okay, so um, I've just opened the change password.js file, but just go ahead and you find that in the auth folder. And let's pop that open, and we're going to do similar changes once again. You guys are probably really getting the hang of it by now. So I'm going to go back to the previous file and just copy and paste the uh, auth import. Okay, right to the top of change password. All right, I'm going to find our AWS Cognito comment and go right below there and create our try catch. Try catch, pass in an error. We can do this with our eyes closed now, blindfolded. Console.log and print out the error. All right, so really, you know, you probably noticed that the only thing really changing from page to page or view to view is the actual method we're calling on the auth object, right? All right, so this method is going to return a user object, so let's set that up, and then we'll do await auth.currentAuthenticatedUser. All right, so we need to know which user that we're actually changing the password for. Um, which will be, you know, the only authenticated user, obviously. All right, so once we return the user, or once we get the user object back, uh, let's go ahead and just console log it. Say console log user. Um, so basically, this is going to be a parameter that we need to pass into the next function, which is actually auth.changePassword, all right, along with a few other things. So let's do, we don't need any return from this one, so we'll say await auth.changePassword. And I really have been neglecting the IntelliSense here, but we can, we can just use that and make it a little bit quicker. All right, so we need to pass in three arguments. The first one is that user object that I mentioned. And then, so if we take a look at our state, we've got, um, and of course, this, as always, this corresponds with the HTML form as well. So we're collecting an old password and a new password, um, as, as well as we're asking for a confirmation of the new password from the customer. Um, now, if you notice, we did not ask for a confirm password on the previous change password screen with the forgot password flow. So that may be something that you want to add in your application. All right, I'll let you guys do that on your own. Um, but we'll implement it here. So basically, we'll, we want to pass in user and then old and new password. All right. So where were we? Okay. So below user, we can do this dot state dot old password. Okay, and the next line is going to be this dot state dot new password. Makes sense, right? All right. So after that, finally, we want to redirect the user to like a confirmation page saying, hey, your password change is complete. So we'll do this dot props dot history dot push. And hopefully I'll get the route correct this time. So it's going to be, and it looks like I've been using double quotes. So I, I switch back between single and double quotes all the time on different projects. So <laughs> I need to get better about being consistent. All right, um, change password confirmation. So I believe we're, we're just using the same page as we did in the previous flow. So change password confirmation. A lot of typing in this tutorial, isn't there? Hopefully you guys aren't getting too tired. Um, you know, I tend to start making more mistakes if I, especially it's late at night right now and been typing a lot and kind of looking back and forth and all around. Um, but I don't think it's been too bad. So, all right, this props history push. So we're changing the password. We're redirecting. Oh, we need a forward slash here. I knew I was missing something. I just had a feeling. <laughs> okay. 
everything looks good to my eyes, so let's go ahead and test this out. Go ahead and save that file. Now, the one thing is uh, we don't actually have a link anywhere to change passwords, so again, I think I'm going to leave that to you guys to add that where you want, where you want to make that available. But for now, for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll just manually um, we'll just manually manually add that into the URL field. So let's go ahead and check and make sure that we know what the route is. Change password. So just go ahead and copy and paste from here from your. Sorry if I'm moving too fast around here, but uh, from app.js to the browser, and just tack that onto our domain here. Hopefully this will work. Cool. All right, so old password, new password, and confirm password. So let's go ahead and try this out. So here we want my existing password, which I just changed, so make sure you don't <laughs> type in the old password, the old, old password. And let's, I'm probably gonna change it back to what it was previously, but obviously you, can, you guys can do whatever you feel like here. So I'm gonna just change it back to my original one. And let's test this out. Looks successful so far. So far, so good. So let's go ahead and log out and then try to log in again with our newly changed password. All right, and my username's there already. I'll just re-enter the password to make sure. Excellent. Hello, Jace Bruins. So that is working, change password is complete, and that concludes this tutorial. So authentication is complete. Excellent. So again, thanks guys for sticking with me. I know this is a, a lot of typing in this exercise and a lot of kind of back and forth, and um, I know we had some speed bumps along the way, but I think we're in really good shape now. We fixed everything, and we've got our fully functioning authentication in our client app. So that is just great. All right, guys. Well, um, again, thanks for sticking with me through this video and uh, hope you learned something. Hope you guys were able to follow along and either watch or, or code along with me. And uh, if you like this content, if it's useful for you, please consider subscribing to my channel, CloudPath. And hopefully I will uh, see you guys in a future video. All right. Take care. Bye.